You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. And with an average salary of over $100,000 a year here in Australia, it might just be the perfect time for you to consider starting a career in digital marketing this year. One of my most popular videos on this channel has been my introduction to digital marketing. And this video is my way of taking that one step further to talk to you about actually considering a career in digital marketing and how to decide whether it's the right step for you. Now, I've been in digital marketing for over four years now as an online freelancer, as a strategist at a digital marketing agency, and also working as a specialist in-house and a more corporate role. So if you do enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you get notified every single time a video goes live where I'm gonna be diving into my best tips and tricks in the world of digital marketing. So why digital marketing and why now? Well, the most successful businesses in this day and age and the most profitable ones aren't actually the best at what they do. The best selling books on Amazon aren't the best written books on Amazon and the highest earning YouTubers aren't necessarily the most talented. The best often just means the best marketed. And in 2020, as the world has gone a little bit crazy, everyone who has never really thought about having a digital presence before has had to be flexible and adapt to the needs of their customers and think about creatively using it for the success of their business. So everyone from teachers to therapists has had to kind of adapt and shift their business model online. And people who have gotten by with decades and decades of running their business purely through word of mouth have really had to think about going to digital for help. It's a no brainer then that Seek have stated that the projected growth in the number of available jobs for a digital marketing manager in the next five years is a crazy 21.7%. Also, according to Integrity, 88% of companies are struggling to find digital talent, with 42% saying it's their biggest and major challenge. And these trends are reflected globally as well. So the trend is incredibly clear, both in terms of job prospects and in terms of marketing budgets for companies. Digital advertising spend per year in Australia alone is about $8.5 billion. So not only is digital marketing a really hot skill to have this year, but it's going to keep getting hotter. But is it the right skill for you? Let's find out. There are some jobs out there in the online universe that lend themselves better to the analytical, logical thinkers. And then there are some that lend themselves a little bit better to those who have a more creative side and that's the part of their brain that they really enjoy using and they excel at. Digital marketing is kind of a blend of these two worlds. So if you're someone who enjoys creating graphics and videos and maybe creative writing, but then you can also stare at really complicated graphs and charts and numbers and figure out conversion rates and where things are going right and where things are going wrong, and that's something that really excites you as well, then digital marketing might be perfect for you. Can you succeed at digital marketing if numbers aren't your thing? I would almost confidently say not so much because just creating the assets and maybe being able to build out a big strategy is one piece of the puzzle. The other piece is being able to actually measure your success and see where things are going right and amplify those efforts and see where things are going wrong and be able to fix those little areas that need improvement. So for example, let's say you have a client who wants to get more people onto their email list and they task you with increasing the number of visitors to their website. But then you go and you analyze their numbers and you realize they're actually getting a thousand people per day to their website, but only 10 of those people are converting into leads. So then you would basically propose the strategy to say, you don't actually need more traffic to your website. Your traffic numbers are good. What you're struggling with is your conversion of those visitors into leads. And then the creative side of you would be able to design a different lead magnet to offer to those visitors to try and increase that conversion rate. So you might be designing an ebook or a free training and the landing page that's going to allow people to actually sign up for that free offer. So it's both creative and analytical almost every step of the way. In addition to the analytical and creative side of you, you also have to be a little bit good at reading people as well. Because marketing fundamentally is all about knowing what people are going to want, how they're going to want information presented to them, and when you should be presenting that information to them. So if that's something that you might already be doing in your day-to-day -day life, then digital marketing might just be the path for you. Let's now talk about how you can actually build up your online portfolio. One of the most frequently asked questions I get from my students is, 
how do I get clients without a portfolio and how do I create a portfolio without any client work? It's a really, really great question and it does have a pretty simple answer. These days when I apply for roles, whether it's with freelance clients or for full-time or part-time roles, it's pretty easy for anyone who's interviewing me to just Google me to find my online courses and this YouTube channel, my blog posts, and everything in between to figure out whether we're a good fit for one another. But when I first started, I didn't have any of that. I just had a one page website that had some samples of the skills I could provide to my clients. So I had a screenshot of an Instagram caption that would allow my clients to get a sense of my copywriting style. I had a screenshot of a Facebook ad I did, some video samples and all of these sorts of things that were all for the Living to Roam Facebook page or Instagram page or email marketing platform. Are you starting to see a pattern there? I was basically my first client and this kind of had two roles in my life. The first was that it took a lot of the pressure off because if I screwed anything up, I was just screwing it up on my own account. So my own trial and error was a lot less intimidating than if I was doing it for a client. And second, it also allowed me to create a portfolio of samples to show off the clients. And as a bonus point, it also meant that I was building up an online presence that would allow future potential clients to discover me through my tutorials and blog posts and reach out for work I could do for them. I don't have the very first site I created anymore, but I will link you to a second version that's up on livingtourum.com to give you an idea of how you could set something like this up for yourself. So I do recommend that if you are gonna wanna start as a digital marketing expert this year, that you start by practicing on your own accounts and building up your own online presence and creating a one-page portfolio site. Make sure to check out my video on how to create your own one-page portfolio site in less than 30 minutes. It's gonna give you a really great place to start. And just remember, you do not have to be an expert in order to work as a digital marketer. You just have to be better than your client. And in the wise words of Sir Richard Branson, if somebody offers you an amazing opportunity, but you're not sure you can do it, say yes, then learn how to do it later. Let's now talk about what kind of qualifications you need in order to get started. I know there are some amazing digital marketing degrees out there you can study, but for me personally, having worked in so many different digital marketing environments now, not having a qualification of any kind has never been an issue because in the digital marketing world, the rule pretty much is if you know what you're doing, you're good to go. And I think that investing your time and energy into a three or four year university degree would be such a waste because by the time you would graduate, everything you've learned is probably out of date because the digital marketing world moves so, so quickly. My advice is for you to take a few online courses to kind of introduce yourself into this world and learn a few skills and then get practice by using those skills with different clients and continue your learning as you go because that is the beauty of digital marketing. The brilliant minds at Facebook and Google will never ever stop innovating and adapting to what's happening in the world. And because of that, you also constantly have to keep learning and keep being more and more innovative with your digital marketing approach. So what areas do you actually need to focus on as a digital marketer in terms of your skill set? I believe that digital marketing kind of divides itself pretty neatly into these two overarching categories, which is strategy and implementation. And in order to get really good at strategy, you need to first begin with implementation. The skills that you might need to develop on the implementation side of things in terms of digital marketing would be the likes of intent-based social networks like YouTube and Pinterest, where people go to look for answers to their questions or be inspired, and engagement-based social networks like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and TikTok, where people go to be entertained and engage with their favorite brands and businesses. And in addition to understanding organic or free methods of growing on these platforms, you would also need to understand paid advertising. Then you would need to understand the fundamentals of conversion copywriting, search engine optimization, search engine marketing, content marketing, email marketing, landing page design, and a bit of graphic design as well. Now you may never need to touch web development in terms of having to code a website, but it's a good idea to have basic knowledge of the back end of platforms like WordPress and Shopify, as they're the two most popular CMS tools for service-based and e-commerce businesses. And at the larger enterprise levels, you might also need to have some familiarity with CRM systems such as Microsoft Dynamics, 
Salesforce and HubSpot. Then the strategy side of it comes into play. And that's the kind of fun bit where you get to take all these little individual elements and piece them together in this awesome marketing funnel that you create for your clients based on their objectives. So depending on what your clients are looking to achieve in terms of getting somebody to purchase their product or service or book a consultation or something like that, then you can take a look at how they might be able to achieve that objective through these different methods and strategies. Finally, I do wanna ease your mind by letting you know that you do not have to be an expert in all of these different areas. You will likely end up specializing in one or two of these skills that appeal to you the most. For me, for example, I much prefer doing Facebook ads over Google ads, but I always knew that I had to be across the Google ads world in case I was ever working with a client that had a Google ads specialist, so I would know how my own marketing efforts would fit in with their existing model. So the key difference between, let's say, a Facebook ad specialist and a digital marketer is the fact that a digital marketer would be across everything that's happening outside of that Facebook ad across the whole funnel, whereas a Facebook ad specialist might only focus on that one piece. And the great news is that yes, of course, companies do look for those hard skills that are gained through training. They also really look for soft skills that you might already possess as well. In fact, the top seven characteristics of success at Google are all soft skills, which are the skills like being a good coach, communicating and listening, possessing insights into others, having empathy and being supportive of coworkers, being a good critical thinker and problem solver, and being able to make connections across complex ideas. So if it's good enough for Google, it's definitely good enough for a lot of other companies out there. And if like me, you get really bored doing the same thing day in and day out, and you like the dynamic elements of what we talked about in this video and using different parts of your brain, then digital marketing might just be the career for you. And I'm gonna link you guys to a really great free resource, which is Digital Garage by Google, which is gonna give you a really solid first introduction the digital marketing world and I'm going to link you to my free resource which has all of these amazing links to websites and podcasts and everything to do with the digital marketing world that really helps me out when I was first starting out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you get a notification every single time a new video goes live. Thanks so much for being here and as always keep creating the life you love.